Hello my friends, how are you all? Katie Rubin here, friendly neighborhood modern mystic energy healer, divine light channel. How's it going? Good to see you all, uh, except that I can't in any way see you. Um, so I've got your three card spread today. This morning has been interesting. It's been an interesting couple last weeks. I don't know if that's been true for you guys, but lots of stuff going on. Energy work, if, oh my god, grounding, weird transits in the sky, activations, healing, realizing, letting go. I can't even get into the astrology of it all. There's been a lot happening. Um, but anyway, I wanted to acknowledge it just in case anybody out there is going through it as well. I've been really like being worked by the divine in an intense way. So this uh, week's reading for you, these three cards really speak to some of that. Um, and it also, what happened this morning is I have my deck I usually read from that you guys have seen, the Colette Baron Reed Enchanted Map deck. And then sometimes I also use this wonderful deck, the Work Your Light deck uh, by Rebecca Campbell. And today, it was like nose all around for both of those decks. They just wanted me to use this guy, the Lightworker Oracle Guidebook, um, uh, Elana Fairchild. So I, as you probably can tell, am still in a lot of other dimensions right now. I'm kind of half in the body and half many other places. Um, I'm also in your records, so I could read this for you. This book is very wordy. And so I'm not going to read the entire entry. As you can see, there's like endless amounts of words and there's actually oftentimes almost three pages worth. So I'm going to give you guys the gist of each of these, um, but it was really interesting how very insistent the records were of, about like, nope, you're going with this book. So in the recent past, we have Divine Grace, The Law of Efficiency, there you have it. Let's hear what that is. Well, here, I'll show you all three. The present moment is the grounding card, which seems very obvious to me. And the outcome here is the wisdom of the divine feminine card. Look at her covered in flowers, all beautiful with the sparkly lights around her. I love it. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's see what the book has to say. So in the recent past, you have been confronted with something along these lines. <clears throat> it's time your life became easier. It's time for you to walk the way of divine grace with trust, simplicity, and acceptance. You do not have to try to make things happen. You can gracefully act without attachment and trust that all will be as it's meant to be. Surrender your struggles now as you allow life to serve you with love and kindness. This is the most efficient use of your energy and will lead to the best results. Sounds good to me. The law of efficiency encourages us to work smarter rather than always working harder. It's like learning to allow a wave to carry you to shore rather than swimming the entire way with your own efforts alone, or even against the current, which would make the journey even harder. It's like planting a seed at the right time so nature will help it bloom in the spring rather than planting it during the dead of winter when it takes a lot of effort to keep it alive. <clears throat> and even then, it may not survive. This is the intelligence of the law of efficiency and divine grace at work. To hitch your wagon to the universe in this way, you need to learn to listen. This means tuning into what feels right or wrong at any given time. Sometimes you will want to push forward, yet your intuitive knowing will guide you to rest. Boy, have I had a lot of that lately. Sometimes you'll want to hide from a challenge, and yet know in your bones it's time to step up and shine with boldness, despite the fear you may feel. The universe has a sense of natural flow, cycles and timing, that assures us that it supports every dream we dare to dream, and that everyone can come to fruition in due course. It may not look exactly as you expect, but if you have set it in motion with desire and intention, karmic law will ensure that it finds expression. Um, I'm skipping ahead here a little bit. The law of efficiency is also sometimes known 
excuse me, as the path of least resistance. We must find the strength that comes from letting go and trusting that the universe knows what it's doing. It takes spiritual maturity to seed to wisdom greater than your own immediate understanding. God, there is so much in that one sentence, you guys. It takes spiritual maturity to seed to wisdom greater than your own immediate understanding. <clears throat> I oftentimes that I oftentimes find that wisdom is the information that is available after your immediate moment. The immediate emotional reaction, you know, we are emotional creatures and that first reaction I love the 12 step saying they they say human beings have first thought wrong disease. And wisdom is the is the like with all the tools I've learned how to use to apply spiritual teachings to my life experience, <clears throat> never once has the guidance been react to life and believe your reactions. Have a good day. Nope. The guidance is always like, look at your reactions, know where they come from, explore their origin, understand the vulnerability underneath their origin, breathe wait, process it, feel, cry. Then, after all that, when you get to a new understanding, maybe then have a conversation with the person involved. It's never like, yes, everyone's an asshole. Go ahead and react that way. <laughs> so that's what this sentence is making me think about. It takes spiritual maturity to seed to wisdom greater than your own immediate understanding. We don't always know. We often don't know what the hell is going on in the moment. Hence the beauty and gift of cards like these and of being able to do things like read the Akashic Records and talk to the divine. All right, so that's the recent past. Somehow we've been involved with the divine grace, the law of efficiency. Working smarter, not harder. And here we find ourselves in the present moment in need of some grounding. I sure need some. You can see it in my eyes. I'm like in 70 <laughs> dimensions. After I do this reading, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be drinking my celery juice, medical medium style. If you're not into the medical medium, I highly recommend him on YouTube. And um, doing some grounding. Okay. <clears throat> you long for the free and open worlds of spirit and light yet you also yearn to experience the healing power and divine joy of sacred sound and living color. You are meant to bring joy and beauty and comfort to this world, to share the spiritual light. To do so, you need grounding. Your dreams want you as much as you want them. Grounding helps you bring your dreams into life, dreams to life in your world for the benefit of many. When a reminder comes from higher guidance to ground oneself, I'll take a sip of this bad boy right now. So nourishing. It is a loving encouragement, never a judgment. Grounding is a spiritual version of remembering to call your mother. It's a chance to check in with what is happening in your physical life and make sure you're giving appropriate time and energy to what really matters to your heart. It's a chance to appreciate the beauty. Oh no. Well, I froze up there in that last video, so I'm hoping my amazing assistant, Leslie, will be able to splice these videos together. If not, you're now watching video number two. Okay, so let's pick, off, uh, pick up where we left off. Grounding, it's a chance Grounding is a spiritual version of remembering to call your mother. It's a chance to check in with what is happening in your physical life. Make sure you're giving appropriate time and energy to what really matters to your heart. It's a chance to appreciate the beauty of the natural world and the love in your relationships. It's a chance to make sure your spiritual work is being applied to your life in ways that feel good for you. Did we all hear that? Make sure your spiritual work is being applied in your life in ways that feel good for you, not in ways that you think you should apply it. It's a chance to speak your prayers rather than only think them. You might even dance them or create a colorful flower offering for your altar or sing them from your heart. We are guided to ground ourselves when there has been an increase of light to the head. 
Case in point, this lady. This can occur through meditation, prayer, or conscious connection with spirit. You might be on fire with ideas and inspiration, but struggling to express them all practically. You may even feel congested or tense in parts of your body where the energy needs some help to flow. That was what happened for me this past week. I had a real detox of the liver, hence my celery juice moments. Um, and I was really like backed up in my liver and there's been so much light coming through through my classes that I lead and my private sessions that my liver said, okay, great, all that light, we're gonna go ahead and detox this liver. So have take a seat, have a seat, lay down wasn't very comfortable but here it is speaking to the need for grounding um, you may even feel congested or tense in parts of your body where the energy needs some help to flow this is a sign to move in a way that feels freeing strengthening and expressive and to add healthy relaxation and exercise into your lifestyle to allow for healing to occur then the light can move through your entire body, bringing vitality and helping you transfer your ideas into reality. To do so, take care of your body, Katie Rubin. Be sure to get plenty of hydration and rest. Spend time in nature. Use salt baths to cleanse your energy. Eat foods that strengthen and nourish you. Medical medium. Ground yourself by releasing emotional content if you're either swinging from, from one extreme to another or retreating to your head to analyze rather than express. You can ground emotional energy by writing in, in a journal, creating art, poetry, music, or dance to express your feelings. You can also ground emotional energy through physical exercise or being in nature. Okay, so that's where we are. Now the outcome of noticing that we need things to be easier, beginning to explore the law of efficiency and divine grace, coming to the present moment to ground is that we step into, right around the corner here, the wisdom of the divine feminine. Now, of course, notice the word wisdom has come up a bunch of times today. Wisdom is that which is gained over time and that which is gleaned through a higher point of view. You can't just react to life and expect to be wise. And we're, we're getting wisdom here a lot. So wisdom of the divine feminine. Divine feminine wisdom empowers you to grow into your vision, your dreams, and the fulfillment of your life purpose. Perhaps you envision a very different life for yourself to what you're experiencing now. This wisdom reminds you that you can experience even the most extraordinary dreams as reality if you are willing to grow into what you desire, to become what you seek. Surrender any plans about how you can best manifest your dreams and instead allow life to guide and nourish you through your experiences each day. The universe supports your divine destiny and is helping you become all you are meant to be. When the wisdom of the divine feminine reaches for you, the message is clear. You are in a process of becoming more of heaven on earth. Sometimes there are growing pains alongside the joy such growth brings. You may feel concerned, thinking your pain is an indication that you are failing in some way. You may judge your suffering as a sign that you are not operating at a high enough frequency. Yet how many spiritual masters upon this planet have endured great suffering? All of them is the answer. As well as experiencing tremendous love and joy in the fulfillment of their divine destiny. Growing pains are just part of the feminine path of creation of breaking through what has become too small for you. There is joy in the eventual freedom, but the act of breaking through can feel painful at times. When things are difficult or you're feeling doubt, when you feel the need to do something that scares you and challenges you at the depths of your being, you are experiencing growing pains. They will pass and you will benefit from the growth. However, you need to know that whilst this difficulty is in your life, the divine is very much with you, encouraging you, believing in you so much that it will deliver a tough lesson. You can handle it for however long it needs to continue, and that won't be forever. This oracle also brings you a message about how much the divine feminine loves you and wants to help you grow with the least struggle and the most peace which brings us back to the law of efficiency and divine grace. If you don't listen to her, instead choosing to believe in fear, you may be terrified of your own growing pains. 
You won't be sure if they'll ever end. You may doubt your ability to turn adversity into triumph. You may lose faith instead of trusting that life has your best interests at heart and that you are capable of meeting any challenge that arises. Instead of trusting, you may believe the world isn't safe. This can keep you paralyzed in self-defeating, self-harming patterns. While these may give you a temporary familiar satisfaction, ultimately these patterns mean you will continue to struggle and suffer under the weight of addiction or emotional pain. You deserve so much better than that. The Divine Feminine speaks to you now and promises that if you are willing to show up to your life each day and trust in the circumstances before you, she will guide you into your most beautiful divine destiny. It is safe to trust her. She wants for you only the best and most beautiful life journey. I said I wasn't going to read all of this, but this one is pulling me forward. One perfectly suited for all that you are and all that you can be. Your heart beats in perfect rhythm with the heart of love at the center of our universe. Trust your heart and trust life. All is progressing beautifully as you are guided ever deeper into your divine fulfillment. My goodness. Well, there you have it, friends. Divine grace and the law of efficiency pushing you in the recent past to step into more ease. You know, working smarter, not working harder. We've been doing some divine work, so we need some grounding in this present moment. We can dance it out, feel it out, journal it out, connect with people, rest, take care of the body, exercise, bring it down into the earth so that the light can penetrate all the cells of our bodies. And as a result, we get to live into the wisdom of the divine feminine, which has everything to do with, um, my gosh, dream fulfillment and stepping forward when we need to step forward and stepping back when we need to step back, which of course can be a really tricky thing to know, which is uh, when it's a good time to book your healing session or your Akashic Records reading with your dear, friendly neighborhood, modern mystic energy healer, divine light channel, Katie Rubin at katierubin.com. But truly, that is the time when you're not sure, like, do, do I need to like tether my camel here or do I need to like take a take a minute and rest is this a time to step back or is this a time to lean forward that's a great time to to book a session truly because when i'm in the akashic records of your soul we can see what is written there and the guidance is always there so namaste my friends a couple offerings for you what's coming up um highest level healing class starts again on sundays we're starting uh the first sunday in april and that's two weeks from now, so now is a good time to register for that. It's a seven-week class. It's online. It's four seventy-five for the seven weeks. Um, it's seven weeks of deep teachings and healing. We're going to be working with resistance and clearing the uh, polarities, the two sides of each resistance that happen whenever we're resistant to something. There, are, there's a polarity that creates. Um, that leaves you stuck. So when you resist like going to the gym, you're also resisting not going to the gym, believe it or not. And so you're trapped here between these two tensions. And so we're going to be dissolving those tensions through energy healing work, but also uh, just understanding better. Um, so that's going to be a powerful class. It's 1101. I see the time. We're going to start that uh, the first week in April. So get registered now. Email me if you have any questions. K-L-Rubin, R-U-B-I-N, at gmail.com um, is my email address. And you can go to katierubin.com to book your session or to pay for that class if you like. And um, Star Beings will start a week after that, I believe, or possibly the same week, Tuesday nights. Star Beings is for folks who've been on a path for a while, looking at yourself, you've done some spiritual work, you've done a bunch of healing work, and you're ready to go the next level with divine activation. This is for people who are interested in what Star Being transmission light, Star Being light transmission can do for your healing. Um, it's really about activating the light workers, healing the spiritual DNA strand through the center of you, and you becoming the vehicle of light that you intuitively already know that you are. So if that resonates for you, that's Tuesday nights. Email me, klrubin, R-U-B-I-N, at gmail.com with any questions you guys have. Take care. Stay grounded. Bye.